My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask your pardon for my sins and grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Immaculate Mother, St. Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. Today, Friday, another day in Lent? Why, yes, but then, no. Let's hear some of the readings to get the beginning of knowing what this means. The first reading from Jeremiah. I hear the whisperings of many, terror on every side. Denounce, let us denounce him. All those who were my friends are on the watch for any misstep of mine. Perhaps he will be trapped. Then we can prevail and take our vengeance on him. But the Lord is with me like a mighty champion. My persecutors will stumble. They will not triumph. In their failure, they will be put to shame, to lasting, unforgettable confusion. O Lord of hosts, you who test the just, who probe mine and heart, let me witness the vengeance you take on them, for to you I have entrusted my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has rescued the life of the poor from the power of the wicked. And what is the gospel selection matched with this reading? That from the 10th chapter of St. John. The Jews picked up rocks to stone Jesus. Jesus answered them, I have shown you many good works from my Father. For which of these are you trying to stone me? The Jews answered him, We are not stoning you for a good work, but for blasphemy. You, a man, are making yourself God. Jesus goes on to call them to witness the good works that he has been doing, the miracles that are coming from his hands, the words and actions that fulfill the prophecies. But, Lord, you are persecuted, and Jeremiah was persecuted before. We can read in the chapter of St. Luke, the ninth chapter, And he said to them, Who do you say that I am? And Peter answered, The Christ of God. But he charged and commanded them to tell this to no one, saying, The Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. Lord, you predicted, yes, this persecution that you are now undergoing as we follow our way through Lent. And you said in the fifth chapter of St. Matthew before, Blessed are you, when men revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account, rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for so men persecuted the prophets who were before you. Lord, you are acting out this blessedness. You are undergoing this very persecution that you are offering to us if we will take up our cross daily and follow you that we would be blessed, we would be like you. In a week, Lord, you will embrace the cross in order to redeem us. And now, as we accompany you on your last trip to Jerusalem, let us fix our gaze on your most holy mother, who is also making her way to the holy city. Jesus, I want to relive these last days very close to you, and one of these ways will be actually to be close to your mother. We want to be close to her, for today is a special day. It is a Friday, a Friday in the fifth week of Lent, which is Friday of Sorrows. We come to these days of sorrow to live them, to live them with you, Lord, and to live them with your mother. Catholics of old called these last days Passion Tide. What is Passion Tide? the day from the Sunday, fifth Sunday of Lent to Holy Saturday inclusive. This particular day in Passion Tide, the week before Good Friday, is Friday of Sorrows. Friday of Sorrows, where we particularly remember the sorrows of your mother, Mary, Jesus. We know that if we're close to her, we will always be close to you. And we recall today, yes, that we can be very close by meditating on your passion and on hers. 
In 1969, in the general Roman calendar, this Feast of Our Lady of Sorrows was moved and combined to September 15th's feast. Also, Our Lady of Sorrows, the collect of today's Mass says, Pardon the offenses of your peoples, we pray, O Lord, and in your goodness set us free from the bonds of the sins we have committed in our weakness. But there is an alternative for today, that which is held over from this feast of Our Lady of Sorrows that has been transferred, and it goes as follows. O God, who in this season give your church the grace to imitate devoutly the Blessed Virgin Mary in contemplating the passion of Christ, grant, we pray, through her intercession, that we may cling more firmly each day to your only begotten Son and come at last to the fullness of his grace. Jesus, help me enter into the contemplation of your cross and enter into the enormous thing that you did, which was to ask your mother to be at that cross. But I think it's first important to understand what does it mean to have a sorrowful heart? It's not the same as a sad heart. If we think of it theologically, what is this sorrow that we are asked to contemplate? It's not sadness, however. Sadness could result from a form of self-pity or maybe an unhealthy attachment to something that was lost. Sorrow, on the other hand, is another one of the Beatitudes and therefore one of the holiest qualities we can possess. We recall that Beatitude, Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. And to mourn, that's to have a sorrowful heart. Grant me this morning at the cross, the morning for sin, the morning for your suffering, the morning for your mother, Lord. You, she witnessed your brutal suffering at the cross, the rejection of you, Lord, your suffering, your death. She did not despair as she witnessed all this, and neither should we. She did not become angry, and neither should we. She did not succumb to confusion or frustration, and we don't want that either. Withdrawal into self-pity? No. She had reacted with empathetic love that flowed from the holiest of hearts. She felt holy sorrow. Mary, my mother of sorrows, help me to have this sorrow for my sins, for the sufferings of you and the sufferings of your son. Mary, your intercession will have me realize that sorrow for sin, for my sin, for the sins of others, for those I love, and even for the sins of others I don't know, well, it's a thing I should contemplate every day, be a, a son of atonement, a daughter of atonement. and to, But to think of Mary, your life, we think of the seven sorrows that are traditionally you underwent. These are not to be confused with your five sorrowful mysteries of the rosary. Traditionally, your seven sorrows are the prophecy of Simeon, the flight into Egypt, the loss of your child, Jesus, Mary, in the temple of Jerusalem, Mary, you meeting your our Lord on the Via Dolorosa, the fourth station of the cross, Mary, the crucifixion of your son, our Lord Jesus, on Mount Calvary, Mary, the descent from the cross where your son was placed into your arms, and the burial of your son Jesus by Joseph of Arimathea. I want to contemplate all your sorrows, Mary, but especially these that are in tune with these last days of Passion Tide, this last week before Holy Friday. I can go to St. Jose Maria, whose very mother was Maria de los Dolores Albasi Blanc, Mary of the Sorrows, her feast day every year, her big birthday type of celebration was on this movable Friday, the Friday of the fifth week of Lent. St. Jose Maria, in his commentary on one of these sorrows of Mary, no sooner has Jesus risen from his first fall than he meets his blessed mother standing by the wayside where he is passing. With immense love, Mary looks at Jesus and Jesus at his mother. Their eyes meet and each heart pours into the other its own deep sorrow. 
Mary's soul is steeped in bitter grief, the grief of Jesus Christ. O oh, all you that pass by the way, look and see, was there ever a sorrow to compare with my sorrow? But no one notices, no one pays attention, only Jesus. Simeon's prophecy has been fulfilled, thy own soul a sword shall pierce. In the dark loneliness of the passion, Our Lady offers her son a comforting balm of tenderness, of union, of faithfulness, a yes to the divine will. Hand in hand with Mary, you and I also want to console Jesus by accepting always and in everything the will of his Father and of our Father. Only thus will we taste the sweetness of Christ's cross and come to embrace it with all the strength of love, carrying it in triumph along the ways of the earth. Yes, as I finish, help me, Jesus, to contemplate how hard it was to have you at the cross, but how hard it was for you to have your mother there. And I contemplate all of this for my sins that placed you there. And I want to atone. I want to grow in heart. Your passion will help me through the love I want to grow in of your mother. I thank you, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, inspirations that you have communicated to me in this meditation. I ask your help for putting them into effect. My Immaculate Mother, St. Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.